Welcome to another discussion of Annex Cloud Market Movers. Uh, this version we call Industry Insiders, where we focus on different industries. Today, we're focusing on the beauty industry, and I'm excited to welcome back Maria, uh, who is the Global Industry Principal for Beauty and Consumer Industries at SAP. Maria, welcome back. Well, thanks for having me. Nice to be here. Wonderful. Uh, Maria, we've discussed uh, about fashion. Today, I'm very excited to discuss about beauty. Uh, if you can start with a little bit of an overview of your work with beauty companies at SAP and how you're helping them. Sure. So I'm convinced that um, our new world is about going directly to consumer when it comes to brands in beauty brands and uh, brands that are um, approaching the digitalization by going directly to consumer consumer are having huge gains because they have then this communication directly with their customer as opposed to be relying only on, on other retailers to, to do that for them. And many, many brands that we know have a, a big enough product catalog to, to enable them to do this. So that, that's very exciting. Great. And, and in terms of the coronavirus, I mean, that's brought in a interesting challenge in many of these brands, uh, as well as a lot of opportunities. Uh, one of those opportunities, as you mentioned, is going direct to consumer. I mean, what are these broad challenges and opportunities that you are seeing specifically in this beauty industry? Well, the beauty industry during the lockdown period had to face the same questions that many other retailers had to, to face, right? And, uh, and, and particularly because some of these brands sell through retailers, they had to consider, okay, what, there's not much we can do. Uh, to help these retailers, right? The stores were closed. Beauty stores, fashion stores. During the pandemic, really, we didn't have these um, these touch points um, working, and so therefore, people were relying on e-commerce. Of course, for brands that already had a direct-to-consumer experience, that was less problematic, I would say. But um, what we are, we are talking about here is the definition of the purpose of the store. The store, the physical store as we know it, what's the purpose of it? And, and beauty has an opportunity to bring an experience that goes beyond just the transaction. They have the opportunity to sell a product, but also provide the experience of how to use the product. And, and I think that that's really relevant if, if there is, uh, you know, for the brands that have their own stores, because there are many, many brands that go direct to consumer like that as well. The role of digital also had to change. But the good side of this is that actually beauty has been doing a very good job with social media influencers. And, and it's probably the segment where we see more um, social interaction. Lots of people trying the products, making evaluations of the products and talking about um, how to best use them. So this gives the possibility for the brands to have these extensions of their own brand, these people that advocate their products. And, and so that was a way to go using digital channels in a, in a, in a, in a way that, that works during a period where people were not able to go to physical places. What is missing though, is that link sometimes from having a social media experience and then how do I buy? And here the smaller brands have an advantage because normally they, they have everything more connected. For a bigger brand, they will need to, to consider to, to take that as an example. And um, I, I mean, I like what Coty did and how they responded to UK consumers during lockdown. A new delivery service um, and um, for, for its high street brands. So the Home Beauty Edit, it's the name of the, the initiative. It's a direct to consumer platform and allows shoppers to buy bundles that are delivered um, within two working days. So the retailing prices was, uh, would start for less than 20 pounds and initially would include hair color products and uh, nail polish. Um, so I think that's a, a good example of an initiative for, for, for a disruptive moment as what we had in the beginning of 2020. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and, you know, as we talk a little bit about disrupting and sort of changing sort of how the industry behaves and how they uh, connect with consumers, uh, you like the term digital acceleration. Uh, a lot of that is happening within the industry. 
you know, uh, two aspects are around this. I mean, this example you gave with Koti was, was wonderful. Uh, in your way, how are brands, uh, beauty brands specifically, looking at digital acceleration? And then point two of that question would be on the loyalty side specifically, how important do you think loyalty and retention now and loyalty programs maybe are for these beauty brands? Hmm. So in terms of digital acceleration, I think when L'Oreal, came two years ago and said, we don't want uh, to be the number one beauty firm in the world. We want to be the number one beauty tech company in the world. This gives a, a, a big indication in the industry that something needs to change. You, you're not supposed to just run your business. You're supposed to do it using technology to enable you to reach more consumers in a better way um, at the time they need the information that they are searching for. So loyalty, of course, is fundamental fundamental because you know beauty brands um, should be rewarding their customers for the experience and not just for buying product that's what it's enabled at the moment that you have tech as part of your strategy in in your company you you are able to reach these consumers and then engage them in a narrative where they experience your products but they're also part of a network they're also part of seeing what's, what's happening behind the scenes. How do you produce your products? What's your supply chain? Um, how do you, how, how can I, you know, are there any other initiatives like, um, can I return my packages after I, I use the makeup? Um, you know, so many points where you can connect with consumers today that go beyond just buy now, buy two, get one free. You know, th that model is really, not working anymore um, and so one of the one of the things I would say is in a loyalty program instead of focusing on, on the people that already buy a lot from you it would be good to start looking at the tier of, of uh, customers that may not buy that often but have the propensity to become more loyal customers and design the loyalty program around th that segment as opposed to the segment that already buys a lot from you. No, that's wonderful. And I think, you know, focusing on that middle layer allows the beauty brand to kind of further uh, the ability for those consumers to potentially even become advocates, thereby sort of driving that circle back. Uh, and so I really like that idea. And, and you know, I know you've been, uh, you know, supporting and, and suggesting a lot around loyalty programs. Now, when we think of loyalty in general, from an industry perspective, after airlines, I guess, if you leave that aside, beauty is probably one industry that has adopted loyalty well broadly yeah. over time. Uh, and the part that you mentioned around the emotional loyalty or the engagement slash experiential loyalty is highly important within beauty brands as they try to differentiate from each other. As you talked about, they're trying to show sort of the life cycle of the product and so on and so forth. But what are other innovations you think that beauty brands can think about to bring their loyalty programs to even a step further uh, in terms of engagement and experience and other ways to, to enhance their loyalty programs. No, I think you're so right. Definitely beauty has been doing a good job with uh, designing the um, loyalty programs that, that go beyond the transaction. Uh, I think other industries and mainly fashion, that's what we said in the, in the last episode, right? That they need to, to follow these best practices from beauty, but there's always space for improvement. And, um, and so there are so many innovations. I mean, one of the things I really like is this component of bringing it all together, right? So bringing, you know, as a consumer, I go to a retailer, I buy a brand I like, and if I'm enrolled in a, in a loyalty program with the brand, I want that retailer to give me points by buying that product there um, and how do i do that so i think that's the clever thing of uh, a loyalty program that connects that b2b aspect with the b2c aspect so at the end of the day consumers go into a shop no matter which shop it is as long as the brand is there the brand has a way to reward me for that um for that acquisition and um and this also is fabulous for uh, for beauty brands because it's a way for them to continue to use that indirect sales model, but at the same time, 
uh, reward their, their consumers and get to know their consumers a little bit better, not losing touch with it just because they are not selling directly. So I think that that's, that's a game changer. That's really an important aspect of, uh, of what all beauty brands in the world should be, should be doing because I'm, I'm loyal to a brand. I may be loyal to a retailer as well, but they are not necessarily the same. I mean, if, if there is a loyalty scheme from a brand that doesn't consider this step, I may actually, um, you know, choose something else when I go to a retailer, right? If there is the, the option between two brands and one gives me points, no matter where I buy and other doesn't, you know, then there may be that case. But then I, I like the innovations around technology as well. So Lancome came up with a custom made foundation machine called Le Tent Particule. I'm not sure my French is not that good, but I hope I was able to uh, pronounce it correctly. So this is a, a foundation machine that promises to find the exact match and uh, for skin using AI. And it's available at Selfridges and Harrods in the UK. So give it a try there. Um, also, as we do more shopping online, and I'm a huge fan of augmented reality to enhance the experience of customers. So take, for example, Sephora's Visual Artist, which lets um, customers try thousands of shades and lipstick, eyeshadows through smartphones or kiosks in stores. I really like this initiative as well. And lastly, the mirror, the smart mirror by Taiwan's new Kimpo group that can rate your skin. So mirror, mirror on the wall, and then tells me where are my wrinkles, black spots, all of that, and makes recommendations. So how beautiful is that? So technology trying to create loyalty um, in, a, you know, in a more futuristic way, but you, you know, the future is now, right? We're seeing these things happening and that's exciting. Wonderful. And, and I think those last two examples I really like because I think they're using sort of external techniques to, to enhance the ability of a consumer to choose your brand, ideally by supporting their product choices, uh, not by directly influencing them, but at the same time, giving them an option and, and indirectly leading them towards your brand. Uh, and then the previous one you mentioned around getting the consumers, no matter where they buy, that's instrumental now because, you know, we know back in 2008 with the last sort of uh, recession, uh, consumers defected significantly, especially in, in terms of price was, was, was a barrier. Um, and, and if I'm at a retailer and I, I, I you know, don't have the affinity built with the brand in a capacity um, where I can get, potentially get rewarded for it, there is a chance of defection again higher than it was last year. And, and that, that brings, in, brings in that. So Maria, all amazing examples. Um, as always, we really love uh, speaking with you because you always bring in some real, real world examples like you did today, at least seven or eight really amazing ones that you pointed out uh, today. So uh, thank you again for taking the time to speak with us. Um, and uh, we really appreciate it. And for everyone else, uh, if you want to see all these videos, please go to annexcloud.com slash market movers or annexcloud.com slash industry insiders for the industry videos. Uh, th thank you, Maria. Bye for now. Thank you.